start. Good evening, welcome to the February 3rd, 2021 Town of Isla Planning Board meeting. Uh, once again, due to COVID restrictions, we are still meeting virtually via Zoom. Um, housekeeping matter, there was one public hearing that was on for this evening. That public hearing has been adjourned. That's item one, Balaban Gourmet, LLC. If you're here for that uh, public hearing, that will not take place this evening. Otherwise, there are no public hearings uh, for public comment this evening, just decision items. Uh, We'll start there. I just want to take attendance, make sure we have everyone here. Mr. Brown? Present. Mr. Bruno? Present. Ms. Cruz? Present. Mr. Frugiari? Mr. Frugiari, can you just go again? I want to make sure we hear you clearly there. Present. Got you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Matamore? Present. Mr. Moriarty? Present. Barbara, can you hear everybody? Yes, I can. Thank you. Perfect. That being said, we'll go right to the agenda. Item two on the agenda is planning board application, major subdivision, decision item, bond extension, American Boulevard, Brentwood, MS 2013-001, westerly terminus of Swan Place, 100 feet west of Hilltop Drive, Brentwood. Applicant requests the acceptance of a continuation certificate in the amount of $42,434 for bond number 7592NR3 for the map of American Boulevard, Brentwood. I do not see the applicant here tonight, Mr. Gonzalez, so I'm gonna go right to you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, this application was last heard on September of 2018 when the board accepted a continuation certificate for the surety bond at that time. Uh, since then, construction has steadily moved forward and both homes of the subdivision have been CO'd. I'm actually gonna just put a uh, screen share up uh, so you can see real quick. Um, let me see if I can put that up there. Okay, there we go. Okay. Um, the applicant is in the final stages, uh, however, still needs to have final inspections conducted before providing a dedication package before the town board. Um, that being the case, the request tonight is for the acceptance of another continuation certificate um, from the insurance company for that same bond that'll run um, until March 21st of this year. This gives the applicant a little extra time and the staff um, to close out the development. So, you know, based on the above, staff recommends the board accept the continuation certificate for bond number 759 to NR3 in the amount of $42,434, subject to the same final resolution last dated April 25th, 2018. Um, we should have everything wrapped up and brought before town board before this runs out. I'm just waiting on some documents from the applicant and then we can schedule final inspections. If they do happen to um, need a little bit more time, they can always get another continuation certificate um, for a few months and we can bring that back for that board uh, as well, so. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Any questions for Mr. Gonzalez? Uh, not seeing any, is there a motion? Mr. Brown. Yes, Mr. Chairman, based on Mr. Gonzalez's staff report, I make a motion to accept the continuation certificate in the amount of $42,434, the bond 7592NR3. It's so a motion by Mr. Brown to accept the continuation certificate in the amount of $42,434 for bond number 7592NR3. Is there a second? Mr. Matamore, second that? Yes, I do. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstentions, it's approved. Item three on the agenda. I noticed the applicant's not here on item three. Mr. Gonzalez, does he need to be here for this one? Uh, he said he, he would like to be, so if we need to right. continue. So I'm gonna I'm going to go to item four on the agenda, uh, site plan modification. Oh, actually, I know I see the applicant has now joined us, so I'm going to stick with item three. He's now in the queue. Uh, item three on the agenda, minus subdivision. Decision item, Ken Sorrell, MN 2019-007-880 Church Street and 1075 Locust Avenue, Bohemia. Applicant requests the waiver of curb and sidewalk along their property frontage in connection with the prior five-lot minor subdivision subject to a mitigation fee. 
I see Mr. Sorrell is in here. If somebody would move him into the uh, room. I can do that if not. Mr. Sorrell, you're in the room if you want to uh, speak. You just need to unmute. Um, but I'm showing that you don't have audio hooked up on here, Mr. Sorrell. Chairman. There we go. He's he's now he's now live. Yes. Okay. Mr. Sorrell, okay. your microphone's open if you want to go. Mr. Sorrell, can you hear us? Hello? There you go. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Go ahead. Okay. Hi. Hello. Thanks for hearing me. Um, and um, yes, as you know, I'd like to just uh, go back to the original the town uh, engineering originally approved my application with no curbs and sidewalks. And I objected. I said, I'd like to put them in, but then I realized by doing that, I'd have to remove a bunch of trees. Plus um, at the time I wasn't living there. And so now I'm actually going to be living in one of those homes and I prefer to just leave those big trees out front and just pay the mitigation fee. Okay, I will go to Mr. Gonzalez for a report and then we'll come back with any questions we might have. Okay, I, I did speak to Mr. Uh, Bruno on this as well. Okay, we'll go to Mr. Gonzalez first. Mr. Gonzalez? Oh, oh Tanner, that's Tanner, I'm sorry, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this application was last heard on February 5th, uh, 2020, so about a little over a year ago. Uh, the applicant requested a waiver of street improvements along their property frontage subject to a mitigation fee, as you can see on the plan um, up on the screen, that frontage that we're referencing is Walnut Avenue that runs north south along all the frontages of these, um, these new houses. Um, the request at that time back in February of last year was denied by this board and the applicant was directed that the approved plan were to stay as is. Further discussions and research have been conducted uh, by engineering staff with the town engineer and the town attorney's office, and the following can be offered. Uh, after reanalyzing Walnut Avenue, the property frontage for the three homes of this major subdivision, new sidewalk would not connect to any existing network continuing to the south. The original thought was because of the long stretch of this project, almost 400 feet of frontage for the new homes it was better to have the applicant install an immediate tangible benefit. The hesitation at the time of accepting a mitigation fee in lieu of sidewalk is that the current $20 per linear foot figure only covers less than one third the cost it takes the town to install the same sidewalk. Although not ideal at all, if the board sees the benefit to have the town waive the sidewalk and contribute to the community improvement fund for improvements elsewhere, Staff at this time has no objections. Per the town attorney's office, this money cannot be specifically conditioned for a location outside of the subdivision area by the planning board. So it would have to be accepted via normal protocol. So we, we did get that distinction from the town attorney's office um, after asking that question to them. Um, in regards to the curb, because that was also a requirement of this um, development plan that the town engineer approved, um, staff strongly feels this should remain a requirement. It would tie into the existing curb going around the corner on Church Street um, and Walnut just north of this project and provide much needed improvement to the very flat profile of this road. Um, based on what we were uh, shown in the area, uh, the extreme lack of pitch on the west side of uh, Walnut in front of these properties is why the town engineer felt it necessary to uh, have a curb gutter installed. So that's a little bit different than a regular curb because the pitch of the road was very, very low. Um, 
you know, the curb gutter would be installed along with adequate drainage along the frontage. Typically at the very minimum road pitch should be about 1% along the frontage. However, in this case, it's less than half a percent, sometimes even a third of a percent. So that, that's, that's really not a lot of uh, room for it to, you know, have the flow line uh, bring all the water correctly to all the drainage inlets um, without kind of making some modifications. Um, you know, a new curb gutter would better direct that storm water flow, prevent any low spots from incorrect paving during the road work, because if you did regular curb, you're essentially paving the road and restoring it as normal, which sometimes if not done correctly, leaves some pooling issues. The curb gutter eliminates that typically um, with the way it's, it's kind of poured. So um, based on the above, the staff recommends the curb and the drainage requirement along Walnut Avenue per the approved plan remain, uh, but we have no objection of the waiver of sidewalk on Walnut Avenue subject to uh, the standard mitigation fee. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Questions for Mr. Gonzalez or the applicant? Yes, um, now the, you know, the, the, the town originally on my subdivision, they had me mark every tree on my property bigger than I believe nine or 10 inches so that they may, pres so they may be preserved so not to take them down. By me installing curbs, I would have to remove like five or six large, probably at least 100, 200 year old trees on the front property line. Um, and as far as the drainage concern, there is one, in any heavy rains, there is just one puddle that forms in front of uh, the most southerly home, which is my property, which again, I have no problem putting in a, a road drain, uh, but again, I don't see the need uh, for a continuous, you know, uh, gutter drain as Tatter and those guys are calling for. Uh, the, the road doesn't flood at all, except like I said, for that one location in front of my property. So, you know, again, I have no problem putting in a drain uh, in front of my property, which is a southerly property. And I don't want to put curbs in because again, it, it'll, it'll have to, I'll have to remove five or six large trees, which obviously adds beauty to the, to the neighborhood. And, you know, Tatter has a, uh, a, uh, a petition signed by all the local neighbors basically saying the same thing that they would prefer that the trees remain and no curbs and gutters because there are none in the immediate area. Now I did speak to Mr. Bruno. I don't know if, if, if Mr. Bruno was on this uh, uh, hearing, is he? I am here. Okay, great. So maybe, you know, Mr. Bruno could, you know, uh, you know, maybe help me out if, if need be, but I, you know, I'd like to, you know, go against the town. But now my, my point is Mr. Commissioner is, Originally, when this application was first approved back in whenever it was, there was nothing. The town said, just pay us a mitigation fee and call it a day. There was no mention of curbs and sidewalks and or drains. Okay, then I changed my mind and said, listen, I'd rather put them in. And then I realized, oh my God, by me doing that, I'd have to remove those five or six large trees. And then I went back to the town and they didn't want to hear it. So now... I don't understand what could have happened between one year when they wanted me to do absolutely nothing. Now, all of a sudden, I have to do curb gutters and all this other stuff. So I just like to know why I couldn't go back to what the town originally requested on the original approval. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yeah, Mr. Gonzalez, go ahead. Uh, just as a, a point of clarification uh, for the board and for Ken, the project was never approved with no improvements. I just want to make that distinction very clear. It was the first review letter that went out to Mr. Sorrell where we did not ask for improvements. And then when he resubmitted the plan, uh, the, the resubmittal did not follow our comments as far as he showed improvements, where at that point I got the town engineer involved and he weighed in because he ultimately has the decision. So that's where that came in from. There was never an approval for no improvements. It was a first right. review. So, so Mr. Gonzalez, the first approval from the board reflected what? The first approval- From this board. Well, there was no approval from this board. It, it's, a, it's a minor subdivision that was done administratively. So there's- With these improvements. This board denied the request for the waiver of those improvements Correct. last year. Got you, thank you. Questions well, from board members for the app, Mr. Bruno? I'd like to speak on this, yeah. Let me, let me tell you a little what's happened. Since the pandemic, uh, my wife and I used to go walking, I live in Bohemia, literally a block from this project. 
Um, my wife and I started, we used to walk in the mall five days a week. Now we started walking the streets of Bohemia, specifically actually Walnut Avenue, because it doesn't connect up to Veterans Highway. So there's little to no traffic on Walnut. Walnut is probably the least traveled street. And here's the interesting part. Walking on it, I've gotten a lot of personal, I mean, five days a week for months, I've gotten a lot of personal knowledge about this. And what it comes down to is I saw no reason, I've been one of the impetus for this because I saw no reason for curb and sidewalk there. Now, what's interesting is that the, the concept of the mitigation fee is always to put it where it's needed. And while I, I would like to go on record though, I understand what you've said, Tanner. My specific thing is if you try and walk from the John Pearl School to the Connecticut Library, almost all of it has curb and sidewalk, except a piece on what is one of the more heavily traveled roads, Un uh, Ocean Avenue. Sikkim, uh, the, uh, the school is on Smithtown, the library is on Ocean. There's a small piece of, there's a piece of sidewalk missing there. If you ask me the question, simply put, I would much rather see Mr. Sorrell's money used, and I think it would be far better used for the rest of the community, if instead of being put in front of the property on Walnut, which will connect up, and if you walk Walnut numerous times, look it over, you'll find that there's, not only is there not sidewalk, but there's no curb and no drainage either. So this is the nature and character of Walnut now, and I'm saying even without the sidewalk and the curb, because of the lack of traffic, I tend to walk it. But I would think that there is a better place to use the money, uh, specifically and especially if we're staying in Bohemia, which I know we can't specifically say where to put it, but I'm saying that my understanding is it goes there. I would, I think it, there would be a far bigger community benefit to taking as much of Mr. Sorrell, put, put crassly, that we take as much of Mr. Sorrell's money as possible, put it into that fund and then use it in a place where it'll benefit the community far more than this location. So. I'm actually in support of, of waiving all of it at, because that same area I'm talking about that doesn't have sidewalk doesn't have curb either. So I would much rather see all of that transferred to an area where children would be walking uh, or biking than, than this location. And that's my opinion on this one, so. So Ms. Gonzalez, can you just clarify that you're saying that the curbing would be a continuation of existing curbing? Yeah, so uh, if you that, look at the plan, on Walnut, but on the other street on the north side. So if you look at the plan here, Church Street, Church street and it comes around the corner going south, uh, there is an existing curb line that comes down and would be connected to, I don't know if you see it, I'll kind of zoom in. There's a little, um, you know, meeting point, essentially. I'll, I'll try to annotate it for you. I can you. see it here. Uh, so that's basically where the existing curb line goes down to, at least in relation to this project. And then it would it would start there and continue all the way down. Now, there is a property directly to the south of this one, I believe. And I'm trying to pull up a uh, Google Street View here that also has a curb. I believe it, it's not a standard curb. Um, it's probably Belgian block, I believe. It's railroad tie, I believe or even railroad tie, um, Church Street, Bohemia. So, so Mr. Gonzalez, I, I will get to the drainage in a second. In terms of, is there, then south of the railroad tie, is there, does the curb continue? Um, so I'm looking at that right now. So they kind of have um, what looks like Belgian block or stone where the curb line should be. And then 
then they have that going into um they do have concrete curb in front of their or actually that might be it's hard to tell it's either railroad tie or curb or you know standard curb but it is there um along their entire frontage basically acting as a curb and but there's is there currently consistent curbing down that side of the street or that looks um, I would say it's, it's probably here and there. It's not, um, it's not consistent. Some houses have it, some don't, um, you know, so there are some, some properties that clearly are putting it in. Um, but it's, it is, uh, it is Mr. Chair, I mean, very sporadic and interesting and sadly enough, and Tanner, you're going to love this one. There's actually a house that recently tore out the sidewalk that was in front of it. Yeah, I think I see the house you're talking about too. It's it, which which is so it's not the nature of the block, and I'm saying that people are. I mean, it was actually it had curb and sidewalk, and the people tore out the sidewalk. I think, and some people have put some curb here and there, and it's it's really a hodgepodge. I think the chances of ever getting any uniformity there are are nil. Um, and that's why that's why I'm supporting this as uh, as an application. There are further questions from Mr. Gonzalez or the applicant from the board. Um, um, I'm just curious. I mean, have there ever been any complaints? Because uh, you know, Tanner's expressing that there's like zero pitch on that road. Um, I mean, have there been complaints from neighbors requesting that drains be put in because of a puddling? Um, I mean, I, like I said, there's a puddling, but it's nothing that the normal block does not have. It's, you know, so the fact that, you know, you're, you're requesting to put in drains, I mean, has this property has been here forever. So has the town been called by neighbors wanting the neighborhood to address the, the flooding? Mr. Sorrell, I'll get to that. Uh, okay. The drainage in a second. Right now, I've asked any of the board members, do you have any questions for Mr. Gonzalez and Mr. Sorrell from the board? And I can only see two of you on the top of my screen because the other screen is open. So I'll take the silence as a no. No, no, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Oh. Mr. Moriarty, go ahead. Just a quick question. I'm looking at the survey and, and I don't, I, I understand the issues that are being discussed and the, the pros and cons of both, but it does not, does not appear to me that the trees are directly on the property line. So why would they have to be removed because of curbing being installed? Mr. Sorrell, can you speak to that? Oh, sure. Now, again, you know, are these trees actually percher scale, you know, You'd hope they would be, but I'm not quite sure. Now, again, these trees are a couple hundred years old. Now, the minute we start going in there and you know putting in these curbs, you're going to disrupt all the root system and virtually kill all of these trees. Because these are these trees are massive trees, and you know the the root the root uh, ball, if you want to call it, or uh, is is extensive. So anytime you get anywhere near those trees, you're going to have to cut through some roots, and by then you're going to kill the trees. And the whole idea is the town is looking to save trees. Because as you can see on the surveys right there on parcel four, you know, they want me to leave as many trees as I can. And it, I just find it amazing that how you could make me take down the most beautiful trees on the block. And just because of, you know, drainage issues, which there are none. I just think to Mr. Moriarty's part, we might have to, to look at that a little closer with the engineering department as well. That they'd have to come down. Tana, can you speak to Mr. Moriarty? Do you have further questions? No, 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 it's, I'm fine. Uh, Mr. Gonzalez, can you speak to the need for the drainage and where that comes from from the engineer? Um, so essentially, anytime we get a long stretch like this, or basically for any new construction, we're always looking for curb sidewalk drainage. Um, if you if you see the elevations on the street, and we have some some um, uh, red noting uh, as well, it's it's very flat. As you can see, the 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 difference between the curb elevations, um, which are, you know, pretty far apart, at least, you know, 50 plus feet apart o over an entire stretch of almost 400 feet. There's only a difference in pavement elevation of 0.4 of a foot. That is, um, what is that? Less than four inches over a 400 foot stretch that is very, very flat. Um, so especially when someone's coming in and gonna be cutting that pavement, they gotta cut two feet into the road. They're gonna have to redo that entire flow line. It's, it's never paved 
uh, perfectly. It's gonna, it, it could create some problems where uh, there could be some low spots. And when you do put new houses in there, they are required typically to contain, um, you know, the, the road runoff in front of their frontage. So that's why we have a drain up in front of uh, parcel two. Um, and then we also have one further down south in front of uh, parcel four. So, I mean, if the boards saw it fit to, to waive the curb as well, um, the town engineer did just ask that we definitely uh, really need uh, or prefer to have the drainage stay because um, that, that isn't even subject to a mitigation fee. There's no mitigation fee for drainage. So um, we would definitely want that, that to stay um, if the board decided to waive the curb. So, I, I mean, I, I'm okay with waiving the sidewalk. Um, the curb, I'm a little confused. I'm talking about it from a consistency purpose, which I have a problem with. Mr. Sorrell is raising it from a taking down a tree perspective, which I think we want to look at and see if that's the issue. If we're, from a consistency perspective, I'm certainly okay with saying if it's not consistent throughout the block, and as Mr. Bruno said, we're never going to accomplish it on that block, I'm okay with the curb cut going. If the reason we're saying we don't want to put the curb in is because it's going to have to take down trees along with that. I'd like further clarification on that from town engineer or someone to look at that. Uh, in terms of the drainage, I'm not okay with letting the drainage portion go. That is me as the chairman. Um, I don't know if there's a consensus from the board. If if that's the overall consensus um, and the reason we're removing the curb is for consistency purposes, I'm okay with it. If it's for tree purposes, I would ask that we reserve tonight and get clarification on whether or not those trees have to come down and bring it back before us. Um, but I'll defer to my fellow board members Mr. Chairman, I'm oh, sorry. Yes. Um, now, the, now clearly, like I said, this, these trees have been here for 100 years. Now, uh, as Tanner said, the road has no pitch. Now, clearly, the, the road has a pitch. From the crown of the road to the to the base of the curb, we have pitch. So what happens is any water that sheds is going to, it may not pitch to a, any given direction, uh, meaning north or south, but what will happen is the water obviously goes from the crown of the roads towards, quote, unquote, the gutter. At which point in time, you know, the, the, the ground absorbs all the water and it's absorbed by all of these trees. So, the, you know, this is why we'll never flood because it's like even your lawn. Your, your lawn will flood if you have no grass. The minute you put grass on, the grass absorbs all the water, moisture, so it takes out all of the flooding. So in, the, an ideal, in, an ideal world, in an ideal world, that may be correct, but I see plenty of flooding on, on lawns and the like. Um, so my, my question is this for the fellow board members. Um, do we want clarification on the trees? Are we okay with the uh, removing the curb? Certainly the sidewalk, I think, hopefully there's agreement on, but on terms of the curb and the drainage with my two questions, the drainage, I'm not okay with removing that from this without further clarification from the engineering staff. The curb cut, if it's for consistency, I'm okay with that. If it's for the purpose of we're gonna have to remove trees, I'd like clarification, Mr. Bruno. Um, I, I agree with exactly with you, Mr. Chairman. I, I would, uh, the sidewalk, definitely. The curb, I have to tell you, is completely inconsistent. I mean, it, it's just not through the rest of the way. I would completely agree with you that the drainage should stay. So I would be in favor of uh, getting rid of the sidewalk, taking mitigation fee on the sidewalk and the curb, require the drainage to be put in. Is there a consensus on that? Hey, Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Brown. Yeah, I'm familiar with the street also being in that area for about 25 years in business. And I would love to see the trees stay in place of the curb. So I would concur with Mr. Bruno and um, leave it with that. Further, further questions from the board? Mr. Sorrell, would you like to add anything further? Yes, I mean, just one more last thing. I mean, so. Um, and like I explained, there's only, I have no problem putting drainage, but like I said, if you have no problem, the only flooding issue is, I shouldn't say flooding, the only collecting area, believe it or not, would be in front of my property, which is lot number, I guess, four, which is the most southerly property. All right. And uh, let me see. Is that, uh, okay. So is that my house right there? Okay. Um, am I looking at, yes. Okay. So basically... Um, where drain, uh, I'm sorry, where Tanner has the drain, which is basically on the southernmost corner of my property, that is not, that's not good. Okay, so basically, kind of where you show my apron, uh, Tanner, if you want to circle that, that's, oh, yeah, that's kind of where the drain needs. Okay, uh, exactly, give or take. I mean, I have no problem putting the drain in, and 
obviously it's in front of my house, so I will put it in the area where it collects. Does that sound fair? And I don't think we need a train north of me because, again, Mr. Sorrell, Mr. Sorrell how, how it's going to happen is we're going to approve it that the drainage is required as per direction from the engineering staff. If you want specific information about that, we'd have to reserve tonight and come back and we can go through specifics. But the approval tonight, um, certainly as far as I'm concerned, there are other board members would not be directing specifically where the drain would go from this board. But let well, the engineering staff review that and make that determination or provide us a more detailed report that we can actually look at and come to a conclusion as to where to go. I'm not, I'll tell you right now, you can speak about it, but I'm not going to make a decision based upon okay, that's fine. information so, that's where the train has to go. All right, so, so Tanner, again, so Tanner obviously drew it someplace, which in my opinion is not working. So clearly they'll they'll come out and see where the puddling is and we'll agree that, you know, quote unquote, the drainage goes there, let's call it. Does that sound fair? It, well, no, it'll be at the direction of the approval tonight. It'll be at the direction of the engineering staff. If there's right, not which agreement again, on that, you'll have to come back before this board. But no, that's fine. Because again, I'll show them pictures. They can come out during the rain and they can make the determination themselves. Yes. Mr. Gonzalez, anything further you want to add? Um, just with the drainage, typically when we have uh, curb inlet, um, you know, basins like that, um, they typically have a little bit of curb on each side. So you know, you may be waiving the overall curb for the frontage, but I just want to make sure that Ken understands that there may be some, you know, five or 10 feet on each side, depending on how the 10 engineer wants to do like either, maybe he just wants to do a flat grate with no curb, um, which isn't ideal. Um, but he, there may be some curb on each side of, of uh, the two inlets. I just want to make that clear. Yeah. So the, 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 the drainage will be at the direction of the town engineer. Yeah. If there's not agreement on that, Mr. Sorrell's welcome to come back before this board if he doesn't want to agree with that. But I think tonight's agreement. No, I'm okay is... with that. Obviously, they'll, they'll put it in the right place. Yes. Right. But that just he's, Mr. Gonzalez said there are two types the, the one that's level on the ground and one that might have a little bit of curve. That's fine. I'm, 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 not, I'm fine. I'm, I'm, Tanner's a good guy. I'm sure they're open and we can, I'm sure we can come to terms with that. Yes. So that being said, is there a motion? Mr. Bruno. We'd make a motion that the application be granted as far as sidewalk and the general curb, recognizing there may be a little piece of curb on each side of the drainage, uh, that mitigation fees be accepted for curb and drain, uh, I'm sorry, curb and sidewalk, and that the drainage be required to be uh, installed at the direction of the engineering department. Thank you. There's a motion by Mr. Bruno to accept a mitigation fee in lieu of the sidewalk and the curb with the understanding that maybe portions of the curb that are needed as part of the drainage and the drainage will be as per the direction of the town engineering staff. Is there a second to that motion? Mr. Moriarty, I'm gonna take your hand coming up as my second. Uh, second. <laughs> second by Mr. Moriarty, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? It's granted, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, board. Thank you, Tanner. Thank you, Mr. Bruno. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Item four on the agenda, site plan modification. Decision item, Jose Gomez, SP 2015-079, east side of Manitouk Boulevard, number 1615, 747 feet north of Locust Drive, Bayshore. Applicant requests landscaping and buffer relaxations in connection with the construction of a new church. I just note for the record that Mr. Matamor is recused on this matter. Thank you. Uh, is the applicant here this evening? Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Roxanne Trella, Dynamic Expediting Services with offices at 1040 Terry Road, Ronkonkoma, New York, agent for the applicant. Ms. Trella, do you have a uh, report or you want me to go right to the staff report? Uh, yes, I'm sorry. I didn't know if you, if you were able to hear me. Um, so we initially heard this application back on May 6th. We were here for um, a buffer relaxation and some site plan modifications. At that time, there were some concerns um, from some of the neighbors and from the board, um, which we hopefully have come to a resolution now with Tanner as far as the conditions. And the client has agreed to all of the revised conditions and we did provide him with a signed copy. Great. Thank you for that quick and concise report. I'm gonna to go to yes. Mr. Gonzalez to give us a report. If we have questions, we'll uh, come back to you. Great, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this application was originally heard on May 6th of 2020. 
Uh, there was an adjournment on June 24th uh, of 2020 in order to work with the applicant on revising those uh, conditions brought up by the public and the board members at the time. Um, letters were received from the public after the original hearing, which were, were forwarded to, to the board at that time. Uh, essentially, those letters raised concerns about potential pollutants from future cars on site, the request of an environmental study, a traffic study, installation of a monitoring well on site, and to postpone any hearings until after the COVID-19 pandemic was over. Um, essentially, the existing zoning and subdivision and land development regulations take into account um, the minimal pollutants that would be generated on site. And basically construction must comply with those regulations. It's standard for any uh, development in the town of Isla. Uh, the building department also has their own protocols which require different third party sign offs for demolition, which had already been vetted and discussed at the last hearing. So that's all been done um, and would be going through the building department. Um, an environmental study uh, and a monitoring well is, is not warranted as this is a permitted use in the zoning code for this area and not near a type one action threshold under the uh, CICRA. Um, the town has not required traffic studies for comparable churches, nor does it meet the necessary threshold of trips per hour in order to require one. And lastly, as you all know, meetings have gone forward as scheduled throughout the pandemic uh, the town cannot hold applications when the means to conduct them are available and have continued for other applications. Um, additional comments by the public regarding outdoor gatherings and comments by the board regarding the rental of the building for private events was also discussed. Conditions number four and five uh, in the attached packets were added specifically to protect the surrounding area and constituents from uses and functions not typical of a church. Uh, the attainment of proper permits are specifically noted in the conditions. If the church wishes to host an event directly associated with their typical functions and for their members, noise disturbance safeguards have also been implemented in the conditions to prohibit PA systems uh, and the like. Uh, a complete prohibition of outdoor gatherings for church functions would most likely be a violation of RELUPA, which is the Religious Land Use and Institutionalized Persons Act. Uh, which was enacted into federal law in 2000. Uh, essentially, this law prohibits the limitation or restriction of res religious assemblies, institutions, or structures. Uh, if permits for tents and outdoor assembly are available in the town, uh, the church does have the right to apply for them. Um, staff has worked with the applicant in order to revise the conditions to best limit any future issues while also not encroaching on the rights uh, of the church. Uh, for a brief recap of the relaxations being sought uh, because of the existing parsonage in the front yard, um, and I'll zoom in a little bit to make it a little bit clearer. So it's an existing two-story uh, frame structure uh, that's, or, you know, uh, basically because of the change of use, um, well, not the change of use, the, the church going up, um, it's, it's considered part of the, uh, in the buffer that would be required. Um, in addition, because the amount of parking required by the use and, you know, the very deep setback of the building, um, there is a landscaping relaxation that is also required. Um, there's 24 land bank parking stalls on site, which will technically be, you know, green space visually, but cannot count towards the landscaping figure per code. Uh, the site meets the parking requirement and in the likelihood, uh, the unlikelihood that any parking issues arise in the future, those land bank stalls can be just uh, constructed um, if there are complaints in the area or, um, you know, if, if the department feels they need to be um, implemented. So if the board feels all the concerns were adequately addressed, staff recommends the board grant the application subject to the attached conditions. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Questions for the applicant or Mr. Gonzalez? Not seeing anyone or hearing anyone because I can only see three of you on my screen right now. But if not uh, seeing anyone, hearing anyone, going once, twice, okay. Is there, Ms. Treller, anything further from you? Nothing further, thank you. Is there a motion? Mr. Moriarty, thank you. <laughs> Just unmute. There you go. 
Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would uh, move to grant the application subject to the conditions. It's a motion by Mr. Moriarty to grant the application subject to the conditions. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Who was that? Do you hear me, Mr. Chairman? Oh, there you go. Yeah, there's a little more for the Mr. Frugiari. Thank you. Oh, okay. Second by Mr. Frugiari. All, All in right. favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? It's granted. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Item five on the agenda, Town Board Application Decision Item 111 Realty Corp CZ 2019-021, Southwest Corner of Union Boulevard and 4th Avenue Bayshore, 1684 Union Boulevard, County Route 50, 1692 Union, Bar Union Boulevard, County Route 50, and 160 Maple Avenue. Applicant requests a change of zone from business district to business three, a Town Board special permit for a gasoline service station pursuant to 68-302C, and a planning board special permit for a convenience market to 68-302.1D. Site plan modifications are required as part of this application. Good evening to the applicant. Mr. Dean Nicole, that could be the shortest application I've ever heard from you. If that's what you're saying. No, don't count on that. Oh, there he is. <laughs> oh. Uh, unfortunately, I know we were shut out or something. Um, I, uh, I assume you uh, read the call of the meeting, Mr. Chairman. Of course, I didn't hear that. I read the call of the meeting. Yes. Thank you. Um, all right. The, um, uh, the applicant uh, is requesting, of course, the change of zone and special permits for a gasoline filling station, which are town board and a convenience store, which is the planning board. Uh, a public hearing. Uh, a public information hearing was had on January 9, 2020 on this matter, at which time the applicant presented testimony regarding the proposed redevelopment of the site for a gasoline station facility uh, with a uh, convenience store. Testimony was submitted by a traffic engineer. There was no public opposition and the decision was reserved. Since that time, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, negotiations uh, and communications have been conducted with the planning staff uh, regarding uh, on-site traffic issues and the uh, uh, the ability of a tanker truck to uh, ingress and ingress the property, uh, which I believe has been resolved. Uh, discussions were had regarding the site plan uh, and the uh, curve cut, in particular on uh, Union Boulevard, and the applicant has moved the curve cut uh, an additional five feet west. Uh, so. Uh, for this application, if it's approved, the, um, there would be uh, the two curb cuts that presently exist for the uh, existing gasoline filling station and convenience store, which are operating on the premises, um, would be consolidated into one. And the acquisition of the, uh, pro uh, the property adjacent on the west, which also has a curb cut, would be eliminated. So we're going from three curb cuts to one uh, curb cut and ingress and egress. Uh, on Union Boulevard. The two curb cuts on on 4th Avenue were consolidated into one and moved further south, some 76 feet, if I recall correctly. Um, the building was requested to be re relocated slightly uh, further south, which is um, uh, now 29 foot setback instead of uh, the original 20 feet. Um, so there, the, also on the building, uh, the cultured stone uh, has been, um, the uh, planning staff wanted brick, and uh, the applicant has uh, acceded to that. So the cultured stone is, is now brick. Uh, there are a couple of issues, and, and I believe Mr. Kogan and I have pretty much resolved the um, covenants and restrictions, but I just want to point out to the board that uh, a, a suggestion has been made or a request has been made that the uh, two signs, the two uh, busy bee signs, which are on either side of the uh, front of the building, um, be removed and replaced with windows. The applicant does not wish to make that architectural change. Um, it just uh, does not, uh, it is not a, uh, a purposeful change. And uh, I would uh, like the opportunity to go to the Board of Zoning Appeals uh, to request sign variances if necessary. That's on, on, on one. Um, the, um, uh, 
there was a, a Wendy's that was approved uh, on Montauk Highway in Islip, and they have three signs. So if the, the Wendy's is entitled to three signs, I don't see why my client is not entitled to uh, three signs. This is a very attractive building uh, that uh, is going to be a vast improvement um, uh, over what is presently there. The site is going from 11,500 square feet to um, 0.53 acres, uh, some 23,500 uh, square feet. Uh, the proposed convenience store building is only going to take 13, roughly 13.5% uh, FAR. Um, the uh, applicant is uh, seeking to have five dispensers, originally requested six, re uh, uh, reduced down to five. Uh, we understand that uh, an application for Board of Appeals will be necessary because of the 75 foot frontage for dispenser uh, uh, ordinance. But the applicant is installing a kiosk and is going to make that fifth dispenser uh, strictly a, um, it's going to be a full serve dispenser. This is a new concept that uh, has been started in some locations uh, because people don't want to get out of their car to go into the convenience store uh, to pay. Um, so there is a an attendant there who will be a full time attendant in the convenient in the uh, kiosk to address um, uh, full serve customers and of course any other uh, uh, any other uh, individuals that self serve um, uh, dispensers that may need some assistance. Um, so we are we are still seeking the the fifth um, uh, dispenser. Um, with regard to, I mean, the, the site is being vastly improved. The canopy currently is six feet off of, uh, I, I believe it's Union Boulevard and maybe uh, 13 feet off of uh, Fourth Avenue. The, this, the uh, canopy will now be completely located with uh, uh, setbacks of uh, 20, uh, 25 feet and 26 feet roughly respectively. Um, I don't have that, I have that exact number, which I, 25.8 feet from 4th Avenue instead of 6 feet and uh, I'm sorry, instead of from Union instead of 6 feet and uh, 26 feet instead of 13 feet. So uh, there's, there's uh, tremendous improvements that have been made. Um, there are, uh, with regard to the canopy, um, we don't have an illuminated canopy with the exception of the signs. Uh, there are two canopy signs, uh, logo signs that are proposed. Uh, both exceed the 12 square foot requirement and it, the applicant would uh, wants the opportunity to go to the Board of Appeals to get the size uh, uh, logo signs that the 6,000 other uh, Valero stations have. And it has a blue, uh, a blue uh, fascia board. It does have a... a um, it is a mansard. It does have a shingle mansard, but it has a blue fascia board. And that blue fascia board at the top has uh, approximately four inches of about uh, 32 to 36 inches as a, um, a, a um, an LED light. It is not backlit, but it is a, a, a light. And uh, I would want to go to the Board of Appeals for an interpretation to see whether or not that is uh, considered a backlit canopy. We do not consider it a backlit canopy. Um, uh, I believe, again, uh, most of the um, governance and restrictions have been agreed to with um, Mr. Um, uh, Colgan. Um, I, I, I believe the uh, applicant, I'm not, I believe the applicant has um, done everything it can to keep its, uh, its identification and the site layout that that is the best site layout for the site. We have designed hundreds of gas stations, uh, and um, uh, we would ask that the board uh, recommend approval to the uh, to the uh, town board with regard to the change of zone and the um, and the uh, special permit for gas station, and approve the planning board special permit for the convenience store. I will defer to uh, Mr. Colgan at this time uh, with regard to uh, any further comments and discussions that we've had. 
Thank you, Mr. Dean Nicole. I'm going to go to Mr. Colgan, but I will note for the record that still may be a record time for you. Uh, Mr. Colgan. I want to keep you happy, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. But this application was previously heard at the January 9th, 2020 hearing. Since that time, the applicant has submitted a traffic study and revised the site plan to improve the site circulation. Comments regarding the traffic study indicated that the site configuration may require that large fuel delivery trucks would need to back and fill to maneuver to the proposed fill locations. In addition, it appears that some fueling positions could be blocked during fuel delivery operations. Circulation on the site could be improved by reducing the number of fueling stations or reducing the size or changing the orientation of the proposed convenience store. As Mr. DeNicole noted, they did shift the convenience store a little bit down to shift that Union Boulevard entrance a little to the west, which does improve the overall safety of the site and improves upon the site circulation. Um, this came at the cost of at least one parking stall, which as per the town's traffic consultant is a preferable trade-off given the improved setback from the intersection. Um, but a cursory review of the site plan did indicate that when the gas delivery truck is on site, a number of dispensers and parking stalls might be unavailable uh, when that truck is there. In addition, the location of the vacuum and air stations may also impede movements when a vehicle is parked there for an extended period of time. Uh, there might be other optimal locations to put these, and those could be determined later during the site plan review. As Ms. Dicola has stated, it should be noted that the applicant is only entitled to three pumps, where the site plan is showing five. Should this application go before the Zoning Board of Appeals, um, they will deliberate, you know, the impacts of that variance. Overall, the concept is a market improvement over the status quo, and the staff supports the change of zone as uh, we continue to work on the site plan with the applicant, and uh, we're here if you have any questions. Thank you. Questions from the board? Mr. Mattermore. <laughs> I just have a comment more than a, than a question. Uh, I, I think it's to be noted that Valero has done a spectacular job of their already constructed uh, gas stations. The one at Saxon and Union, uh, the Northwest corner is really a model. It, uh, I use it all the time. It, it's heavily landscaped. Uh, the Valero uh, representative here, Mr. D. Bartolomeo, Seems to be a cut above, uh, I think, the, the gas stations here in Suffolk County. And I just note that this is progressing uh, around the same time that Tritech is progressing across the street on the Toro property. So the timing, I think, is significant and the construction timing is significant. And I think we're lucky on the planning board to have an application on this site as well that will upgrade the neighborhood, and I, I think it will make a, a, a very positive uh, move and step for the Bayshore train station area. And this is now heading to be part of it. So uh, I, with that, uh, I'm prepared to make a motion, but I'll let you call for it, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Matamor. Further questions from the board? Mr. Chairman? Mr. Bruno. Uh, I agree with Mr. Manamore that it's, a, it's an excellent redo of the site. I also agree that the um, Union and Saxon facility is a wonderful model. And, and, uh, and not surprisingly, I'm going to speak about architecture. <laughs> Who, who's surprised by that one? Um, interestingly enough, I went to that site. Uh, I went to look at this one, went to look at that site. And that, I believe that that, um, one, I, I, I agree with Mr. DiNicola. And uh, I'm looking at, at uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, Colgan's changes, and I agree that going to the brick like the other one is much nicer. Um, I would love to see that other one there. And interestingly enough, I don't believe that one has any signage on the building. Um, and I'm going to take issue with a couple of things on this one, just as a point. Uh, I see no value in double windows that are behind a column and I don't understand why we have to have the two lower signs. By the time you see them, you're pulled into a parking space. I think if you don't know where you are by then, your problem is bigger than what these two signs will do for you. 
By the same token, I do think that windows in those locations, as Mr. Colgan has shown, uh, are very good and they would work because they would be, if you go in close, I don't know, Mr. Colgan, can you go in close on the site plan? Because you can see there's a floor plan there. And um, what you'll note is that the windows would end up uh, just outside the refrigeration, okay? Um, you would end up with a window just outside the refrigeration area. And the second one I would suggest would end up um, behind the, um, what do you call it? Uh, would end up where the, uh, where the person working is behind the counter, who in fact would then be able to look out that window and, and see onto the pump. So personally, just as, as my own architectural opinion, one, I'd like to see no signs on the building. I think if they're on the canopy, if they're everywhere else, I mean, the Valero on, on Saxon and Union seems to do pretty well. And I didn't see any signage on that building whatsoever. And in this particular case, I, I just don't see the reason for the signs, the two lower signs for sure. And I'd certainly much rather see single windows there. Thank you, Mr. Bruno. Ms. Nicole, did you want to speak to that or? Let me see if, uh, um, is, is, um, is uh, Mr. Tartaglia on, on this line? Uh, Chris? Yes, Gene, I'm here. Uh, Chris, would you speak to this or would someone else speak to this? Uh, where they want to put win they want they want to put windows where the um, existing uh, uh, busy bee signs on the uh, uh, on the east and west sides of the front entry. Yes, thanks. Um, nice of this way. I, I, I'd like that architectural uh, taste. Sure. Um, can I uh, share my screen, perhaps, folks? I have a um, I have an exhibit up that if I could share my screen. They should be able to give you permission to do so. One second. Thank you. Okay. Uh, can everybody see the floor plan? Yes. Yes. All right. Thank you. So, as Mr. Bruno indicated, the um, the glass uh, locations of the signs are are they, they they kind of split the difference between back room and and cooler storage area and the areas that Mr. Bruno mentioned, which are sales areas. Um, but I just want to kind of point out uh, one other thing on the, on the screen here that I think kind of helps our case a little bit. Um, and that would be the, let me just move this around a little bit, sorry. Okay, so if we look at the elevation, this is a 3D rendering that we had prepared. Um, I don't think we could fit any more glass on the front of this building, quite frankly, Mr. Bruno. Um, there's a tremendous amount of glass, uh, as I do believe, I know you were an architect, so you would be aware as well. Energy code has certain requirements with regard to how much glazing you can put on a building. The entire front wall of this building has more square footage of glass than it has square footage of wall. So I'm, I don't really see the logic or the need behind having to put more glass in. I understand the board's concern about signage, that, that's understood. Um, but I think as Mr. Dina Cola mentioned, we'd like to have our day with the zoning board to see if we can get signage that's been approved for, for similar other retail uses very close to this location. Mr. Tartaglia, if I may, I'm suggesting that the, that the actually, that I'm having less glass. I'm actually getting rid of the two double windows on each side of the door. I see no value in those. And in fact, they look out directly to the column. So I'm saying that the double windows to the right and the left of the doors are removed, okay? So that you've got the doors, windows in between and the other doors. Then the double windows on each side are removed and there's only a single window on each side. So I'm actually removing the equivalent of, double of one double window. You will actually, in doing what I'm talking about, end up with less glass, not more. But, but the issue is that you're talking about breaking up large expanses of glass, which quite frankly, as the engineer uh, who designed it and the applicant who's on the line, they believe that's a lot nicer than smaller expanses of glass. When you, look, when you walk into this facility and when you're inside looking out, there's nothing more impressive than seeing this large expanse of grass, glass. If you've been to wineries, 
you've been to other buildings that have this kind of a feature, it looks an awful lot better, with all due respect, to have much larger expanses of glass than smaller broken up pieces. We believe this is a much nicer architectural component um, and that's why we're looking to do it this way. We put a lot of time and energy into this design, Mr. Bruno, and, and we really don't think that breaking it up with small pieces of glass is gonna really achieve the goal. It's not a matter of breaking it up. In other words, the large expanse that you have where the double doors are, everything from one edge of one double door all the way to the other side stays as is. I'm not I, I understand you what you're people. saying, but I believe we're just having a professional disagreement. Now, okay. with regard to the window being blocked by the column, you know that those columns are four feet off the front of that glass. As is indicated in this view that I'm showing, that, that glass behind that column is absolutely visible to passersby on the street. It's not blocked at all. Okay. So well, again, we, we respectfully suggest that our design is superior than the one you're suggesting. We're disagreeing with an architect? Oh my God. <laughs> uh, I guess Engineers I and architects will never get along. <laughs> yes. I, yes. That we agree on. Uh, no, that's fine. Thank you for your answer, Mr. Tartaglia. I have to tell you, I, we will agree to disagree, uh, but I certainly think that it would be better to, to put the window there than to end up with two more busy B signs. We know we're going to go through an architectural review component at the end of the line anyway, of course, that's a part of the town's process. And again, we'd like our day in court with the zoning board on the signage. We might lose them. Sure. Because you think somebody won't know where they are? <laughs> I leave that to you. Thank you. Thank you. We have further questions from the board. Not seeing any. Ms. Colgan, can you just go, go over a couple of things for me? One is agreement on the language. All language has been resolved. Uh, yes, we revise the covenants slightly from your packets. Uh, it, it basically glorifies what Mr. Dinicole had hinted at, and that uh, we've agreed to allow the applicant to go before the Zoning Board of Appeals for any sign variances uh, that they've requested thus far, at least that's been presented in conjunction with this application. Everything else is largely the same. I don't think there's anything substantially different. And Mr. Dinicola has the latest CNRs. He can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but I believe we're all in agreement at this time. Great. And Ms. Dinicola, I guess, is the understanding that if, in fact, the Zoning Board of Appeals does not grant the variances for the extra signage, they will not be there. And also, if your interpretation is not the same interpretation as the Zoning Board, the lighting above the Valero on the outside of the, uh, over, outside of the, uh, what do you want to call it, the stations there on top, the canopy is not obviously in agreement with what the code calls for, subject to that interpretation from the yeah, zoning board. Uh, you know, what I'm saying, Mr. Chairman, is that uh, we would like the opportunity uh, to have an interpretation of that. We don't think it is backlit, uh, but that's, again, that's okay. a board zoning appeals jurisdiction. Yeah. Uh, and with regard to our signs on the canopy um, uh, and uh, the, uh, the uh, two busy bee signs, well, we can, I mean, I, I think it's very attractive. I know Mr. Bruno is uh, an architect, but... Uh, you know, we have good taste. Uh, so yes. that, that and, and the application, I mean, we'll be adding an awful lot of landscaping, which I uh, almost, uh, I think, over 5,000 square feet of landscaping. I, right now, it's it's just a mess. This is a $3 million investment, uh, Mr. Chairman, and we're trying to do everything we can. And the, the town's experience with our Saxon Avenue site um, should indicate how we run a, uh, a service station facility. Uh, if you saw that during Thanksgiving, the way it was decorated with the pumpkins, and I mean, it was really Mr. Bartolomeo, he goes out of his way to be a good neighbor and, and to make the town really attractive. Uh, I'll, I'll agree with you, Mr. Nicole, the, the Saxon Avenue property looks great, and I'll agree with you, this is a vast improvement of what's there. I just want to make sure we're clear on uh, what, what needs to be done in front of the Zoning Board of Appeals, just because we're Yeah, granted. no, I, you know, Mr. Uh, Mr. Cogan and I are, are in agreement. I believe okay. correct. Uh, sure. John? Yes, we've we've we resolved any um, inconsistencies or confusion uh, today. Perfect. Thank you. If there are any further questions from the board, I hate to ask this question, but anything further, Ms. Di Nicola? Um, let me see. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mr. No, Mr. Chairman. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Nicola. That being said, is there a motion, Mr. Matamor? 
Uh, I'd make a motion to approve the application subject to the covenants and restrictions that have been uh, worked out uh, and taking into consideration Mr. Bruno's comments, but uh, I, I, I think there's a very good argument that the glass is positive. So uh, I, I'll, and I certainly appreciate his comments, but uh, I, I uh, would move to uh, make a motion to approve uh, subject to the covenants as worked out by the attorney, uh, Mr. Um, what's that guy's name again? Oh yeah, <laughs> Dina Cola, pardon me. Uh, and uh, Mr. Colby. Thank you, Mr. Madamore. There's a motion by Mr. Madamore to grant the application subject to the uh, covenants and restrictions worked out between Mr. Colgan and Mr. Di Nicola, or that attorney, whatever his name was, as Mr. Madamore said. Is there a second to that? Second. Second by Mr. Bruno. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? The application is granted. Thank you. Thank you. Item six on the agenda, I am recused on that matter, so I'm going to turn the uh, meeting over to uh, Mr. Brown. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, item number six, Bay Green Realty, LLC, CZ 2020-002, east side of Bayview Avenue, approximately 210 feet south of Montauk Highway. It's properties known as 7 and 9 Bayview Avenue. Applicant requests a change of zone from resident A district, to resident C district in order to construct 16 semi-detached senior housing dwellings. A plan modifications are requested as part of the application. Do we have an applicant? Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Vice Chairman, members of the board. My name is Larry Gargano, principal of uh, the applicant Bay Green Realty. Office is located at Five Shore Lane, Bay Shore, New York. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Vice Chairman, members of the board, uh, this application was heard uh, in public hearing on August 26th of uh, last year, at which time we presented a concept plan uh, to propose the development of 16 cottage style uh, for sale homes. Uh, the uh, homes would be restricted to 55 and older. So uh, essentially a senior community under the residence C zoning. We identified at the uh, public hearing uh, certain parameters that allowed the site to match the uh, criteria and legislative intent of the residency district and uh, took a direction to create a, what we would call either a cottage community or a pocket community, uh, which is what you uh, were presented at the concept hearing. Uh, since that time, we have taken the concept plan and advanced it with our civil engineer, which is the uh, plan that you have up on your screen now. That plan is consistent with the concept plan. We just wanted to make sure that all the dimensions and all the, the ins and outs of what would, would ultimately uh, become a site plan review should this application be uh, approved we wanted to make sure that there was no um, problems uh, from, this, from the concept plan which was presented. We also further advanced uh, design elevations to, uh, to demonstrate the uh, intended architecture of the buildings uh, at the time of the public hearing. We had represented that these would be uh, one and two family units only. Uh, the reason for the one and two family would be uh, would be to add variety and interest and to further strengthen the cottage community type of uh, development we wanted to propose. They would include front porches uh, at a depth that would be for sitting and and uh, you know passive conversations within the community. Certain units would have wraparound porches again to add interest and uh, variation to the architecture. The elevations were uh, designed in a preliminary format, which are now part of uh, what I believe you have available on your screen. And uh, we feel very, very uh, confident that the project, if approved, would be a tremendous asset to, uh, to the East Isla community. And we're looking to build upon the success of other similar uh, properties that we have been involved in uh, in the town of Islip. Uh, namely uh, in Islip and Bohemia and East Islip as well. And we think this is a very responsible and uh, appropriate 
use and uh, application for the for the site. So with that, I would just be available for any questions. Uh, one one thing that I, I will add is that in in moving from a concept site plan to a hard line uh, civil plan, we uh, were actually able to achieve uh, additional parking. So we went from 29 to 31, and I believe uh, at the public hearing, uh, a question of parking calculation ratio was discussed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gargano. Just please stand by if the staff or any of the board have any questions. Um, with that being said, I'm gonna to go to uh, Sean Colgan for the staff report. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. Uh, this application was previously heard at the August 26th hearing last year. Primary concern that was raised at that time was the traffic. Town's traffic consultant reviewed the submitted traffic analysis and was in agreement with the findings of that study, stating that the level of trip generations for the proposed project is considered consistent with the surrounding land uses and will have insignificant, if not undetectable impact on traffic flow on the adjacent streets. And that the proposed project would have less impact on traffic than would as of right development of the site. Uh, the site would comply with most of the legislative criteria of the residency district. The current site plan does not meet the 25 foot buffer requirement to the south and west, though bringing those buildings in a few feet could make the layout compliant. Building five has a 17 foot setback to the residentially zoned portion of the TD Bank property. That property received, received a ZBA special exception to use a portion of that property for the bank use. Uh, the applicant is asking for parking relaxation of one parking space. That parking ratio uh, provided by the applicant is consistent with other senior developments that have been approved by the board and the town. Um, lastly, the buildings closer to Bayview show a 40 foot setback instead of the required 50 feet. Uh, 40 feet is the required setback of the residential district predominant in the area, uh, but that variance would have to be determined by the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, should this application go before and be approved by the town board. Um, so the staff has prepared covenants and restrictions that uh, reflect the submitted site plan. In addition, the staff submitted uh, the most recent elevations by the applicant to the board. Also, we've received a number of emails and inquiries uh, within the past couple of days, and some of those have just been sent to the board uh, today. So the staff has been asked to verify that the Duke board did receive and review those emails. So with that, I'm here if you have any questions. Uh, thank you, Sean. Yeah, I got some email mails today. There was quite a few of them, but got them very late. Um, okay, with that, we'll go to the board for questions. Madam Moore? Uh, I, just a comment more than a question. You know, we've had a chance to, to digest uh, this proposal from the concept point of view to where we are now. And uh, yes, there's been some opposition of the uh, single family dwelling homes in East Islip. However, uh, I think uh, Mr. Colgan's uh, staff report, I think, was accurate. Uh, I, I think it's sort of exciting that Islip is on the cutting edge of trying new things and new housing stock, which we often hear is uh, necessary and required for uh, our various hamlets to flourish. And it fits in, I think, with, with general planning uh, being as close to the shopping area of East Islip as it is, that helps to confirm that this is a good idea. We can understand, and I do understand, the concerns of the single family dwelling owners, but I, I, I think Mr. Gargano's research, and it isn't just uh, local research, but perhaps regional research, shows that this kind of a project is uh, a good idea. So uh, I'm prepared to make a motion if, uh, to uh, uh, move forward with it uh, when you call for it, Mr. Vice Chairman. Okay, we have any other board members with questions? Mr. Bruno, is that you raising your hand? Not specifically. I'm just looking, Mr. Gargant. The buffers. Can somebody talk to me about the buffers, Sean? There's. Uh, I mean, I like the project. I, I want to be very clear about that. But what is this about the five foot buffer? I I want to know where that comes from and, and 
what are we abutting and why is the buffer required? Uh, well, in the in the code, it is written in that a, a residency project like this does need a 25 foot vegetative buffer when it abuts um, another residential use or zone. So in this case, there are single families uh, to the east as well as to the south. And there's a little bit of residential uh, zoning district um, kind of to the north on the jagged edge at the northern side, uh, but that abuts a TD Bank property. Um, so technically, the applicant is asking for a buffer relaxation to the little northern project, but it's you know it's abutting a commercial use, so to speak. The rest is single family, so the 25 feet is required. Um, and speaking with the fire marshal, moving the buildings in a few feet um, would provide adequate space around the uh, around the cottages, so to speak, to allow for any emergency access and, you know, instead of going up, having a vegetative buffer abutting right up against a house where, you know, ingress and egress would, might be a little more difficult. Uh, so to comply with the full 25 foot buffer, um, that's, you know, that's what the subdivision and land development regulations require. And that's how we think it would better comply um, with moving those buildings in. Uh do we have precedent for for buffers of this of this uh, size? I am not aware of any. Um, normally, when we do buffer relaxations that I'm that I'm aware of in recent memory, anyway, it's usually with blight removal. I mean, I don't think this constitutes blight removal, uh, certainly. Um, in other instances, where like for instance, there was another recent application where we were moving um, basically an industrial yard among single family homes, uh, that asked for a modest buffer relaxation, but that was displacing arguably a much worse use. Um, so that was the way to make that one fit in. Okay, thank you. Okay, do we have any other board members that had any comments? I have, I have a question. Oh. Ms. Cruz? Oh. Um, the traffic study, I know that a lot of the residents had concerns about putting in a traffic light for on Bayview, uh, on Bayview Avenue. Um, was that ever, dis was that discussed? Not that I'm aware of. Um, putting a traffic light there would be under the jurisdiction of New York State DOT. Um, you know, the staff has fielded a number of inquiries and concerns and, and complaints, complaints, quite frankly, about the traffic into and off of Bayview Avenue. Um, it, you know, it's, it doesn't, um, it's not, the street doesn't cut through to another street directly to the north. Um, it, does, it is a T intersection. There is a light to the west at Harrison um, Avenue that only really goes red for pedestrian movements, which is not all that frequent. Um, so making a left from Bayview onto Main Street is, you know, it's a little difficult, particularly when coupled with the on-street parking. So um, any improvements there would really need to be vetted with the New York State DOT. And at this point, you know, I, the traffic study did not address that. Sean, is that something we should get an answer from this state DOT? Um, I mean, it, it was a concern. The, the traffic consultant didn't raise it. If the board wants to, you know, have the staff field that inquiry with either our traffic consultant, our division of traffic safety, we could do that. Um, I don't know what the answer would be, obviously, but, you know, we could certainly ask about it. Mr. Vice Chair. Go to Mr. Moriarty. Yeah, I, I, would, I would agree on that point um, that, that the vice chair was raising. Um, Sean, it seems to me that there have been you know, significant objections and co well, concerns raised by the community with respect to traffic on that street. I think we all know it well. You know, it's a, it's a very popular street, particularly in the summertime. Um, it's not to say that I think that this project is going to generate an overwhelming amount of traffic. I don't think that's the case, but it might be a way to sort of mitigate some of the concerns raised by the community if we can couple this project with uh, with the traffic light at the top of that uh, street, I think uh, a lot of the opposition that, that seems to be consistently rising to the surface from uh, from folks living down that street could uh, could be addressed. So I, I don't, um, I don't, Mr. Gargano, is that something that you consider at this point or have uh, factored in as part of the project? Um, <clears throat> uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Moriarty. Uh, it's my understanding that at any time regardless of a current application that either the town of Islip or even the neighbors who live on Bayview Avenue who have you know been interacting with the uh, traffic movements for many years could petition New York State DOT to do a traffic study 
and determine whether or not a traffic light is warranted at this intersection. Uh, I, I was told that in the past, uh, there, were, there were some concerns about a traffic light that it would actually maybe cause more problems than it would solve in terms of a variety of different uh, conditions relevant to having a traffic signal. So I, I, again, I, I just want to reiterate what's, what has been said at the public hearing and has also been said here tonight is that what we're proposing would not increase traffic movements above and beyond what, 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 what could be built in an as of right development based on the current zoning. So in that, in that sense, what we're proposing wouldn't have an excess impact that would warrant this particular application bearing the responsibility of a traffic light. That said, we would certainly do our part uh, to, to, with DOT, New York State DOT, to see if, if that would help the community and subsequently and will, uh, help this, this project if approved as well. Right, right. I think thank, that, thank you for it. Go ahead, Mike. I'm sorry. I think I think that would be a, a very um, you know welcome approach. I think it's uh, it's certainly an issue that seems to be raising significant concerns. I'm sure you have heard them, Mr. Gargano. Um, you know we've heard it. I think as recently as today, a sort of flurry of other emails have come in from community um, uh, leaders and uh, and activists and um, who've indicated that's a that's a significant concern for them. That might be a way to sort of mitigate some of that. Uh, some of that concern, and I show if we can uh, spearhead spearhead that effort um, to sort of you know, address that concern. I think it would be uh, kind of a welcome addition to the project. I, I can certainly raise that with our division of traffic safety to find out who the point people would be. Right, and and, and to, uh, to to underscore the issue that the, the point that uh, Mr. Matamor raised, I agree, Mr. Gargano. This is a I think it's a very very good project. You know, I think we want to do everything we can to to try to help the project along. But certainly, meeting some of the concerns of the neighbors is uh, is a significant concern as well. So, uh, you know, if this can sort of, you know, accomplish that task, I think it uh, it would uh, it would help uh, you know move 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 the ball along. Agreed. Okay. Well, thank Agreed. you, Vice Chairman. Um, did any other board members like to comment? Um, seeing none, I'm going to go to Mr. Moriarty for a motion. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion just to reserve this evening to give Sean some uh, additional time to uh, to address this uh, traffic signal issue and work with the applicant to sort of uh, to see what uh, what can be done to, to mitigate some of the traffic concerns that are raised. I have a motion from Mr. Moriarty. May I, may I, uh, I'm sorry. May, I, uh, did you say reserve decision? Uh, yeah, move to reserve decisions on it just on the basis of giving the town some time, at least the planning department some time to uh, to just address the uh, the traffic signal issue. I, I would just like to interject and, and just speak uh, uh, based on my experience with New York State DOT, particularly in the current environment that we're in, that 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 could potentially be a long time to get any kind of response out of New York State DOT. And while we certainly would be, be willing to do our part and, and contribute to the process of speaking with DOT uh, to, to kind of wrap the project up on that, uh, I, you know, based on the fact that it's not going to be adding impact beyond what could be there as, in an as of right, I feel is an unfair uh, burden to the project considering uh, you know, the, the timeline in which we've, we've already been uh, involved, but I, I just wanted to put that out there that a traffic light could have been proposed by any number of, app, of, of parties at any time, given the what we know to be a heavily tra traveled road on Bayview Avenue. So to so just wrap it around this application uh, and the timeline that that may extend the, the project is is quite frankly financially uh, challenging. Yeah. Uh, uh, under, uh, understood. And, and I'm not, to, just to be clear on this motion, I don't think I'm, con we're not conditioning the approval of the application uh, to the granting of a, of a traffic signal at the, at the, uh, at the top of the, the street on Main Street. But I, I think I'd, I'd like to see if we could at least examine the possibility of that. Um, you know, giving giving the planning department some time, and obviously working with your cooperation, Mr. Gargano, and then uh, 
and seeing where that that uh, I, I recognize the difficulty of, of trying to get the DOT on board with a project with a request like that, but, but at least giving the opportunity to sort of explore that, I think, uh, might help, you know, globally with the project. Anyway, that's a point of clarification. Yeah, and Mr. Gargano, too, and I, we, if it's reserved as there's a motion, it's, if you have, I don't have a second yet, but um, if it is reserved, we can bring it back any time. Um, and we're not waiting for a determination if there should be a traffic light there, but we did want some input, according to Mr. Moriarty. With that being said, I have a motion. I'm looking for a second. I have a second by Inez. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, it's unanimous with one recusal, which is our chairman. So the application is preserved tonight. With that being said, Sean, I'd like to expedite anything we could with the state to see how quick we can get an answer. We'll start tomorrow. All right, Larry, we'll be in touch with you as soon as we can. Thank you very much. I appreciate the interest and the patience. And I, I know that this is this has been an application that has generated a lot of interest. And uh, I appreciate that the board continues to be professional and look at it as a professional planning board. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gargano. With that being said, I'm going to turn it back to our chairman. Is he still here? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Brown. Uh, I'm only here for one purpose. Is there a motion? <laughs> There's nothing else on the agenda. We'd move, move to adjourn. Motion by Mr. Moriarty to adjourn the meeting. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Matamor. All in favor? Aye. Aye.